Hey everybody, this is Christy with the Garden Tower again. Um, I've got a few requests asking for updates on the tower that you guys saw me plant. Um, I think that was about three or four weeks ago. I should have went back and looked, but I didn't. Um, but this is the tower that you guys saw me plant uh, initially. And you can see how big everything is now. I'll turn the tomatoes are much, much bigger. And you can see the nasturtium there I planted, all this kale. So one thing I wanted to tell you about this is if you look at this kale, you see how big those leaves are. Um, this kale right now is ready to harvest, though I'm doing this uh, one-handed, so I, don't, I can't really use the scissors very easily. But all you have to do is come in and take one of those leaves off, and then you can put that in your fridge or right into your salad. So this keeps... Clipping those leaves keeps it from shading out other stuff around it, um, which is what I'm doing right now. And I'm just finishing up for the day and thought I would give you guys a little, you know, glimpse into what's been going on. So take that one off too. So everything in here's grown really well. Um, this uh, red leaf oak lettuce is, is going gangbusters, and as you saw, the kale is going gangbusters as well. Um, and this is, um, it's called an Alaskan, I think, variety, uh, variegated, uh, nasturtium that gets maroon flowers. And once again, these are all edible. The leaves are all edible. And once it gets the flowers, they're edible. You can see that my beans here are, we planted from seed in that video. So they're going gangbusters now. Next week, um, I will be doing a video on trellising plants. Hi, Cindy. Um, you can see the pea right here. It's going pretty well, too. So that needs to be trellised as well. So they're they're not quite ready for that yet. So next week, we'll, um, I bet they'll probably be close. And then uh, I'll be able to show you guys about trellising in and out of the tower, out of the tower, including all the way in the bottom. Um, so the experiment that I'm running, and you have to uh, forgive all the clutter in my greenhouse because... Um, I just, I'm trying to get it organized right now. So, this is the experiment tower. <laughs> so if you can see these large fronds here, or stakes, uh, stalks, I'm sorry, those are asparagus. And so I've been wanting to do an asparagus tower for quite some time. Um, we have a huge problem with asparagus beetles in our yard where our, our um, big asparagus bed is. And... I am, I'm kind of getting tired of battling them. <laughs> so I've done everything organically that I can, um, and ladybugs and lace wings, and they just decimate my asparagus crop every year. So I'm going to try to do asparagus in a tower this year. Well, actually, it'll be a couple years. So if you see these little fronds here, um, I started those from seed this year. And actually, starting asparagus is very, very easy. It... It, it starts very well. Um, the issue with it is that you have to have a lot of patience because it's two to three years, um, depending on the size of the crowns, or if you start from seed like this, it's three years before you can harvest. Um, so it allows the root structure uh, to gain hold and, and be able to get enough nutrients back in to produce stalks. So these tall stalks that you see here, those are the ones that I took out of my garden um, to transplant into the tower. And on the cap here, these spider-looking things <laughs> are um, some of the crowns that I took out of my, my bed out in the yard. So I'm going to transplant those too. I can't do it while I'm doing this video because, uh, once again, it's one-handed. But when you, <clears throat> when you plant asparagus... They like to be slightly mounded, and they like these all of these root structures to be opened up and spread out across, and then a nice mound of dirt underneath to support the, the main crown. Um, it is uh, pretty easy to do in the top of the tower, because uh, you can get into all of the areas very easily and mound stuff up. It's a little more difficult to do in the pockets unless you have a very small hand. So, like, I'm able to reach in and do everything uh, very easily. But I was using this little um, mini tower plower cobra head thing, 
it makes it really easy. Uh, I'm not going to disturb the stuff that I've already planted here. But it makes it really easy to kind of go in, pull up the soil, and then it can mound it for you a little bit. And then, if I can try this real quick, <laughs> then you take your asparagus roots, or crowns, and you just spread them out nicely. Oops. Spread them out in the pocket. Get them nicely pushed in and then bring the dirt back over it. Those might not sprout this year, but those are probably one year or two year old crowns. And uh, if you're planting in a container for asparagus like this, they usually say it only will produce for three to five years. And in, you know, out in a yard, some asparagus buds produce for 50 plus years, um, but normally it's like 10 or 15 years. But because of the amount of soil in this column, um, I think that it'll probably last me five to ten years. But I won't be able to harvest any of the stuff next year. I'll have to wait another year. <laughs> so patience is a virtue, I guess. Um, so I will keep you guys updated on what's going on with the asparagus because it's um, it's it's pretty interesting. I mean, most people really love asparagus, but it's a really expensive vegetable to buy. And it's mostly expensive because of the time investment that goes into to growing asparagus. If you're going to do an asparagus bed out in your yard, um, you should uh, interplant it. So you should plant tomatoes around the outside of it. They're a great deterrent for uh, asparagus beetles. Uh, and then plant companion plants that help the tomatoes grow, like basil and things along those lines. Um, then, and you can even plant lettuce in between the rows of the asparagus beds if you have a big garden of asparagus and get two or three seasons out between the, from between the rows. But I didn't plant the whole tower in asparagus because uh, asparagus has huge roots. Um, they, uh, sometimes they can go 10 feet into the ground. So part of this experiment is to determine, you know, how long I can get an asparagus or asparagus plants um, to last in the garden tower. Um, I'm hope, like I said, I'm hoping 10 to 15 years, but we'll see. Um, they are very, very, they have a huge root structure, as you can see, from just a one-year-old uh, crown. So the, um, the tower is probably going to get very, very root-bound pretty quickly. And that's part of the, the thing that we're checking on um, and doing, the, well, I'm checking on and doing this experiment. Um, oh, I see a couple. Um, <laughs> Hi, Tina. Thank you. I, I'm glad you like the videos. Uh, Tracy, you can buy the Garden Tower at www.gardentowerproject.com. Um, and Jeannie, the soil mix that we put in here is a organic container blend soil mix. So the one that's specifically in this tower is, um, oh, it's a pro mix, a organic pro mix that's in this tower. So um, they sell those in like two and a half cubic feet bags, pretty cheap at most of the large, uh, uh, most of the large box stores. So the other things that I went ahead and planted in here are some lettuces, and I just did this today. So they're not looking the greatest because nothing likes to be transplanted right away. Um, so you can see those, and you can see all the little asparagus there. I call them asparagus. I don't know. Uh, asparagi, asparagus. I'm not sure what the proper name is on it. And then in our other tower here, see we got a bunch of strawberries. Um, these have been uh, overwintered, not on purpose. <laughs> they just made it because the soil column um, allowed the, the root structure to not freeze so bad. And I don't, I'm sorry, but I don't know what variety these uh, strawberries are, but they're doing really well. And we have one there, if you can kind of see it, that's almost ripe. And a few that are getting ready to bloom. And then I planted a bunch more nasturtiums on the side, mostly because I really like nasturtiums. <laughs> They're pretty and they smell great, and they make a great pesto as well. Um, so, and then the last tower that I was going to show you over here, 
I just planted this today, so once again, things are looking a little weak. Um, so there is a, this one was outside last year, all winter, and we brought it into the greenhouse, and there's a sunflower growing in it. So I thought, that's kind of cool. I'll just let it go and see what happens. So there might be a huge sunflower going to the top of my dome um, by uh, the summer. I don't know. But we planted a bunch of basil, um, bok choy, uh, Chinese cabbage. We got my cilantros and parsley here. And like I said, we just I just planted this today. So um, things are not looking great, but they'll perk up a lot over the next couple days once their roots get used to being in, the, in a new place. And then we got a tomato on top and some peppers. And I uh, did sprinkle some carrot seeds all around here um, as an interim thing as well. So just wanted to give you a couple quick updates so you can see how things are going. And uh, I'll keep you guys updated on this experimental asparagus tower. But that's going to be a long haul, so you're going to have to follow for a while um, to see how the results actually work um, with the asparagus tower. But I think they're going to work pretty good. And then here's a you know a full shot of of that tower that you guys saw me um, plant before. So next week I will show you guys how to trellis these peas, for instance. They're getting long. I'm going to start, uh, you know, tendrils are come out and they'll start choking out stuff. And these tomatoes are starting to get pretty tall, and so are the beans. So all of those need to be trellised um, or staked. So that's what we'll do next weekend. So everybody's kind of caught up on uh, how to take care of it over the whole the whole year so thanks everybody for watching and uh, if you have any questions outside of this video then just post them in the comments and we'll do our best to respond to every one of them thanks and I hope everybody has a great week